Um, honestly, like self-doubt, worthiness, like if I'm gonna fail, but as an entrepreneur, you're always gonna fail. It's about rebuilding and recreating. So it's like you're testing to figure out what's gonna work in order to scale the business. I got to this point where I'm like, no, I can be a mom and have success. This is not one or the other. The reason I started to have great success is because it, I looked at the numbers of what was making the, the most money behind a chair, and that was hair extensions. And so I'm like, okay, so then I have to only market hair extensions. So when I just started doing the numbers, that's really when I was like, okay, sky's the limit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special edition of the Money Mondays. We are here inside of the RV Motorhome Parks at the Wild Jungle. We've been having a whirlwind of podcasts recently. We just had an all women's event last night, 30 amazing female speakers. And timing wise, it worked out perfectly in between travels that we have an amazing female speaker here, not just female speaker, an amazing speaker in general, who's built businesses for many years. It's been very exciting to have her here. The timing worked out perfect because we got to do an animal tour. She got to feed over 200 animals right outside. And so as you guys know, the way this podcast works, we keep it under 40 minutes because the average workout is 45 minutes. The average commute to work is 45 minutes. So this episode will be around 35 minutes for your listening pleasure. Without further ado, if you could give a quick two minute bio so we can get straight to the money. Perfect. I'm Danielle K. White. I am the creator of Natural Beauty Row Hair Extensions and Isla Hand Tied Hair. Um, I started, you know, this journey just doing hair and see what was going to happen. And when things were spicy with me and Garrett, I, I built an empire and a brand and it's really kind of taken off. And I'm also a mom of four beautiful daughters and two dogs. Um, and yeah, that's kind of who I am. I love it. So we covered three core topics here, how to make money, how to invest money, how to give it away to charity. Okay. So on the make money side, how did you decide to dive into consumer products and hair care products? Uh, okay, so my journey starts um, probably 15 years ago. I've been behind the chair as an artist for over 22 years. But about 13 years ago my is when the market crashed and everything was going crazy. And the only skill I had in front of me was doing hair. Now, I kind of was like looked at hair as being more of like a hobby. And it wasn't until like we financially lost everything that I'm like, okay, well, what can I sell? Um, and I had created a very unique way of doing extensions, which I branded Natural Beauty Rose. I just figured out stuff with, with my hair and other women's hair to make them these beautiful natural looking extensions that didn't damage the hair. So right after we lost everything, I'm like, what, what can I do? And actually the first thing I launched was an online course. Mm. And this was back when not very many people had were selling online courses and not a lot of people were on social media. So it was actually really scary because the big names like Paul Mitchell and Vidal Sassoon were the only ones selling kind of online courses yep. and things like that. So here I am, a broke mom, on the brink of divorce basically with my husband didn't know if we were going to stay married and i'm like well fuck it i have nothing to lose uh -huh. and so i literally like youtube how to put together home study courses i bought like a, a camera that i could afford i had garrett come over and film me doing this extension technique and we just put it up there to see what would happen and to see if people would buy it and that's yeah. kind of where it started wow. but it's crazy it's been, <laughs> it's been a wild journey so as you start to make money, right, you get to that first 10,000, then 20,000, 50,000. What is it that holds a lot of people back from really scaling to six figures and hopefully millions of dollars? What's that mental block holding them back? Um, honestly, like self-doubt, worthiness, like if I'm going to fail. But as an entrepreneur, you're always going to fail. It's about rebuilding and recreating. So it's like you're testing to figure out what's going to work in order to scale the business. And I can tell you as a mom, there's so much mom guilt of trying to be a business owner and entrepreneur. You're like, oh, I should just focus on the kids, focus on the kids. And I remember so many times letting that consume me, that mom guilt consume me until I got to this point where I'm like, no, I can be a mom and have success. This is not one or the other. So for me, it wasn't, it was kind of this, as I started to see this online program take off, I thought, wow, as a hairstylist, I was making, you know, an extra, at the time we were broke by the means, by the way. So by just making a couple like thousand dollars a month extra, sure. I was like, wow, this is incredible. What else could I do? So then I started launching classes and I was like, okay, well, if I, you know, charge $3,000 a, a ticket and if I have 50 people in a room, I'm just starting to run the right. numbers in my Jeez. head. And so all of a sudden I'm this hairstylist that looks at doing hair is just a hobby and like all of a sudden like i'm thinking like what else is next you know i'm like is there hair care is there hair brushes is there and the, what else can i do so it was like i almost like saw the the ceiling just explode and i think a lot of you know speaking from a hairdresser or a mom it's like we hold ourselves to this such a small ceiling so when i just started doing the numbers that's really when i was like okay sky's the limit i want to grow this let's see what we can do and that's really where it started 
So let's say right now there's a girl out there and she's actually a hairstylist mm -hmm. and she doesn't know what to charge or how to charge or how to raise her prices and she's mm -hmm. getting busier and busier. How can a girl that's charging, let's call it a hundred bucks a session, mm -hmm. start to raise it to 150, 200, 250, yeah, yeah. 300 and be confident about it? Yeah, it, it's, it's crazy because I think that we, we run on these stories and these limiting beliefs and hairdressers and artists are very emotional about their decisions. And I am I am an artist, but I'm also very... Um, I, the numbers don't lie. Yeah. So for me, when I was you know, behind the chair, the reason I started to have great success is because it, I looked at the numbers of what was making the, the most money behind the chair, and that was hair extensions. And so I'm like, okay, so then I have to only market hair extensions. And so in the beginning, you're like, well, if I don't have, if I can't get all these hair extension clients in, I still have to take these lower level services. So I had, you know, the hair extension clients are paying me three to $5,000, and then I had the color clients that are paying me $350. And I'm like, okay, well, these are just holding a placeholder till I can fill these with more extension clients. Right. So for me, I don't believe in like in the hair industry, people will be like, oh, you need to raise 5% every single year. And I'm like, that's stupid. That's what our industry teaches us. So for me, again, it's like, okay, if I'm making the most doing hair extensions, then I have to make my color pr prices match. So I did it backwards. I did a lot of things backwards in the hair industry. So instead of like doing a 5% increase or this or that, I went to my clients one one Saturday morning and I was like, hey, I'm doubling my color prices. It's $600. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, they were so thrown back, but I wasn't living in a place of feelings. I was living in a place of these are the facts. And this is what I'm making dollar per hour doing hair extensions. So I have to raise my prices and colors to keep these on the books. And it's crazy when I did this, a lot of them stayed. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I was like, oh, I'm actually undercharging and undervaluing myself. <laughs> right. So for me, again, it was just kind of like going back to, okay, you, it's all a story. No matter what industry you're in, it's all a story. And it's a story that you, you cultivate and you abide by those rules. I always say, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If those rules don't make sense, you can create whatever you want. And so that's kind of what I did in the hair industry. And that's really even why my education just started to take off because not only did I have the skill, but I had this mindset that I believe was different than a lot of artists out there. So that same girl's listening. She's like, okay, I listened to Danielle. I'm going to raise my price. I'm going to go $250 now. And maybe I'm going to go 300 mm. next, but I want to get more clients. Yeah, yeah. How do I get more clients? I believe in personal branding so much. Um, I think in a world where there's so much online, it's like, how do you decide who you trust? Especially with hair. Like there's now, when I started, the, like hair extensions looked super janky. Like it was just, they looked bad. And now there's just, there's so many beautiful hair extensions. And so I train thousands of artists all the time and they're like, how do I do this? And I'm like, it starts with you being your authentic self and creating your own personal brand. And they're like, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, that's not me. I'm not that person. And so for me, I just tell them, if you can create a personal brand that's authentically you from where you're at today, not to where you think you need to be, because that's when people miss the mark and they look inauthentic online. Yeah. And you're like, you're trying to be this person 10 years from now. And it, it just kind of looks cheesy and we're not buying it. So I think I would just, I say to any hairstylist or any entrepreneur, it's like, start with where you're at and be yourself. Cause it doesn't matter if your life is a shit show. People are like, my life's a shit show. And I have kids and toddlers that are throwing shit everywhere. And so it's just this really connecting ability and you'll start to draw clients in. And once you do that, you gain their trust and you grow. So does your clientele. So the client you have today is not going to be the same client that you're going to have in 10 years. All right. She did it. <laughs> she listened to you. She got on Instagram and Facebook and she's tweeting and she's TikToking and she's starting to build her name. Hmm. Went from 250 to 300 to 350. Right. Now she's making money. Let's go to the investing side. Hmm. Why should she invest into her mind? Why should she get a mastermind or a coach or mm. read you know online courses or watch videos why should she get better here in her mind well well entrepreneurs and hairstylists we work like 12 day, 12 hours a day like it's not uncommon for an artist to wake up go to work at nine and work not till like 9 p.m at night till like midnight or even some of my artists are like oh yeah i was at the salon till 2 a.m <laughs> i'm like well, that is wild who takes a midnight wow. appointment but it really it, it causes them to get into this burnout phase and it's this phase where they can't say no to money at the balance of their life and loved ones around them so at that point it's like what is the point of making all this money if you're not creating balance in your life so for me it's like investing in the right coaches it's for me I love working out it helps with your mental health um, for me it's setting boundaries you know what I mean because it doesn't matter like if you get to the point of burnout like who cares but in my experience when I got to that place is actually when I started making more money because I created those boundaries inside of my business and I was able to make smarter decisions so for me it's like investing in yourself will actually turn a profit inside of your business and inside of your relationships. Same girl crushing it. She listened to all your advice. This girl's a big fan, right? <laughs> she's at $400 a session. Now she got a hundred thousand mm. followers. She's booked up left and right. She doesn't even know how to take on more business, mm. but now she got over a hundred grand saved up in her piggy bank. Mm -hmm. 
how does she start deciding about investing? Maybe it's real estate, maybe it's cryptocurrency, maybe it's business, maybe it's more into herself. Like, how does she make that decision to finally, like, okay, I got mm -hmm. my big girl pants on, I'm gonna start investing into things? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was investing in products. So it was like, okay, I'm gonna invest in getting a hairline started. I'm gonna invest in getting some hairbrushes started and things like that. Because again, I was looking to take the vision even even bigger. So I kind of wasn't at a point where I was gonna, I was still investing back into my business. So I think a lot of times entrepreneurs get stuck in a place where they don't wanna invest this, back, this money back into their business because they can't see the big picture and, sure. and the big return. So for me, that's kind of like where I'm even still currently in is, is you know, just trying to invest back into my business to see what what's next. And who, I'm a firm believer in too, like I think that the more you invest in your business, the more people you can impact and help. And, and that's extremely important to me as well. So as you've built this career up and you've gone through ups, downs, coaching, teaching, mm -hmm. living and breathing it, raising four kids and two dogs at the same time, mm -hmm. how are you juggling this whole world of family, relationships, situations, live events, masterminds, online mm -hmm. courses? Like you're doing so many different things. How do you manage it all? Um, I think people have a perception. They think I'm like crazy, crazy busy. But I believe that there's like moments of hustle, right? There's moments of hustle that are very much needed. Um, but even in those moments of hustle when things are busy, one of the things that Gary and I do is we always do day nights. And w with my kids, it's like if I have these busy seasons of hustle, it's like I'm creating even like date days with my kids. So I think for women, there's like a lot of that like mom guilt that happens, but it's like you have to have such a passion for the bigger mission that you're serving to have those seasons of hustle. And then you can kind of pump the, the brakes for a minute. I had two daughters. I had an a, a eight year gap. And in that eight year gap, what people don't know is that's when I was building my brand. And so then I had two more kids, but I built my brand in that time where now I can actually spend more time with my other set of girls. Right. So, but now my, I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old. I'm getting into that phase again where I'm like, okay, the mom game was really fun. And that was like fun to spend time with my babies. But even now I'm like, okay, what's next? Yep. And I think it's for me, even just, just this year, like, yeah, I started, I built my hair em empire and all these things. But now it's like, I still want to work on my personal brand and I still want to expand there because I don't know where it's going to go, but I just, I'm looking for the next bigger version of me. So what about investing into your relationship? Talk to us about date nights and yeah. how do you, you know, there's chaos, right? Yeah, yeah. Garrett's running a bunch of companies. You're running your own companies. You're both building your personal brands. You're both doing live events. You're both speaking events. Like mm. you also have both these yeah. war winds, like Tasmanian devils of things that are going on in your world. How do you keep the calm and the chaos? It's hard. <laughs> I, mean, it, I mean, Garrett and I will have seasons where we're like very connected and then seasons where I'm like, okay, we're just going to have to really make an effort to, you know, communicate. I think in your relationships, that's the biggest problem is if you don't have communication, you don't get through those storms. And so for me, it's just creating a constant connection with my husband. And I can always tell when like we're drifting a little bit. And so it's like, hey, we're going to go to Cabo. Like nice. we need to go, yeah. we need to take some time and we need to reconnect. Cause for women, what happens is when you're uh, like a uh, gone from your husband for a while or whatever, sometimes you can build up this resentment and the guys want to come home and feel connected. And then you're, the woman is kind of standoffish and feels resentful. So one of the things that's really helped me inside of my relationship is noticing those triggers inside of me that I'm not resentful, but I need to reconnect with my husband. And so that's really strengthened our, our relationship and our marriage. And we do date nights, honestly, like two, three times a week. Oh, great. Another thing yeah. I did when I had my fourth daughter. I was like, I'm doing it different this time. And I was like, I'm going to have a night nanny help with bedtime yep. because that time with us, even if we're so exhausted at the end of the day, just having 10 minutes to be like, how was your day? Or let's have a shot of tequila or whatever it is. Yep. Like just having those daily deposits and moments has really helped strengthen our marriage. So then we can go out into, into our events and into our business and really give it all our, our all and crush it because in a sense, like our marriage is strengthened and that's, Honestly, it's consistency. It's it's just, it's consistency and people will invest inside of their businesses and then they kind of like stray away from the relationships. But ultimately, if that's going to happen, that's going to cost you later down the road. So it's it's not easy. It just takes a, const, a constant effort and lots of communication. So this question is going to be for the ladies that are listening. This is the last few years in particular, mm -hmm. women started finally making some serious money. Yeah. And there's been a lot of com companies that have been creating, making money online, building personal mm -hmm. brands and f becoming real bosses. Yeah. You know, we've always had it, but now it's like ha yeah. you're happening and yeah. you're seeing it at all levels in all countries. Right. For the ladies that are listening, how do they deal with dating mm. a man that makes less money than them? Um, you demand more out of your man. 
I mean, honestly, like I told Garrett and this, I, I kind of feel cold when I say this, but I was like, I, I want to be successful because I'm very passionate about what I do, but I also want to be taken care of. And I think that's part of the, like the male and female role role that makes me feel very safe. So I kind of encourage him to go out and crush it. And I have flat out told him, I was like, I want you to make 10 X what I do. And I want to be very successful. And I don't necessarily, there was a time in our relationship where it was like, it caused a lot of, um, like, like, like almost competition. And I feel like these boss women, it's like, you don't want to create this competition with no. your man no. that's going to polarize your, or that's not good for the relationship. So for me, I always want to stay in that feminine role, but I will not apologize for wanting to have passion and purpose and success. So I think it's just finding the the words to validate your man so and appreciate him and also push him at the same time. Um, again, just speaking from my experience, that's been very healthy for our relationship. I still feel like I can pr- produce, but I also feel you know very safe being with him. So what about the kids? You know, when you have four kids and two dogs, mm-hmm. how do you, when juggling the world, how do you invest time and spend time and focus when you've got so many businesses going on? It's it's funny because I, w- I was actually raised Mormon in a very traditional family in Utah. And so it was like very much like the mom role and the mom stays with the kids and does the carpool and this and that. And I just, I kind of got to this place where I was like, that's, that's not me. And that doesn't mean I'm not obsessed and love my kids. And so I had to work on that over the years of retraining old, like how I was raised culturally and just being like, hey, mommy's in the house working on her business and the nanny's taking care of you. But guess what? The nanny is probably, she's a professional. Like if mommy's trying to juggle a webinar and do all these things while training, I'm going to be yelling at my kids. So I kind of had to let go of, of that with my kids specifically and know that they're being loved and appreciated. And I'm like, what? and I even had to come to this place where I'm like, I think they're doing a better job at being the, uh, their daytime care than I would because I'm always trying to juggle things. So for me, it's like when, when I want to hang out with my kids, I'm like, hey, I had a, a call cancel. My phone goes down. I grab my baby. I'm like, the nanny's still there. And I'm like, I'm going to take the baby and we're going to go have lunch for an hour. And I just try to steal as many moments as I can like that. And it's so fun. And my kid, I can tell my second two kids how they're raised so differently than my first two because of my willingness to let go and again i believe it's so important for women especially female women that have kids to let go of that guilt and understand it's not this or that it's you can build it all you can have the success and you can still have amazing moments with your children so i just try to make a daily effort to make deposits in my kids even if it's in the morning and i'm like literally coming down while the nanny's taking them to school give them a big hug and a kiss and you know little moments like that i think are just are really important and we we take family trips a lot so like or at least like we'll try to take like two or three a year big family trips and i'm i think that's a great way to like reconnect with the whole family it's kind of a shit show and i'm always like (laughs) why am i here what are we doing (laughs) but it's still fun so that girl called she's back Mm -hmm. and she's here (laughs) she's balling now okay okay she's making half a million a Mm -hmm. year she's got her own product line now Mm -hmm. she listened to everything you said she's coaching she's speaking at events yeah but there's a bunch of haters in her comment section. Mm. A lot of people are mad at her, trolls. Yeah. How does she deal with the hate that comes with um, being a successful woman? It's, it's hard. I, I feel like I've gone through so many, I call them hate waves. It's like every time I would rise in the hair industry, I'm like, oh, another set of haters. And it becomes like less paralyzing. And for me, I'm like, do I want to give this my, my time and my attention? Or do I want to focus on my purpose and my mission and what I'm supposed to be doing? So that's one of the things like in the beginning, it was kind of hard for me. But now like... I would say most of the time, not all of the time, I would be a liar if I wasn't like, I'm going to freaking go off on this bitch. She's crazy. But most of the time I try to delete and block. I'm like, it's just not worth my energy. And I have to understand if I let them suck my superpowers, if I let them take my power, then I can't put it somewhere else where I need to, whether it's with my husband or my kids or back into my business. So for me, I don't, and I'm so busy, like I literally... I might assume people might think I'm really social but if they follow me on social media but I'm like very into my family and my kids so for me I'm like nope I don't have time for this so I would just say encourage anybody who's out there you know be strategic with your battles is it worth your time maybe you need to put your phone down and walk away but I just am a big believer in like delete and block and because that will literally suck your energy and then it's hard to build from that space I'm actually currently going through it right now like I had to let go of some major pieces in my business and there was a week that I was woke up every single morning nauseous and I didn't just have like mean comments I had people making videos and tagging me and just talking about I'm just such a horrible person it wasn't just like a random troll it was like 
past students that felt betrayed when I'm making important decisions in my business that I know I need to make for my family. Yeah. So it goes beyond just, you know, mean comments. As a, as a business owner, you're going to deal with betrayal and ultimately you have to do what's best for your family and for your business. So I think that's where that stings more than just a mean comment because you're like, I showed up for you. I created you. I right. helped you get to 500,000. Now you're turning your back on me. Mm-hmm. So I, I just think it's those are the, the hard and the sticky times. But, that, but like I said, it's almost like you just have to like weigh it out and you know like in three weeks this is going to fizzle down sure. and I'm going to rebuild and do what I know I need to do for the, for the, for the mission of the company. Yeah. So it's really cool, guys. What she just said is block and delete. What happens when you block and delete? That troll literally explodes and vanishes from the, the planet. Mm. Like they're actually dead. They're gone. They turn into <laughs> ashes. Wherever they are on the planet, they're just gone. And you'll never hear from Johnny 444 ever again. It's he always just, a random name. He just disappears. Yeah. You'll never see him again. Okay. Last section is on the charity side. Mm-hmm. Why do you think it's important, and not the money part of it, why do you think it's important to involve kids and family to do things that are philanthropic? Either go to a homeless mm-hmm. shelter or go feed or go to senior citizens or a toy drive. Like, why is it important to get the family involved in charity? Um, I just think it shows not just like, oh, look at how mommy can make the money, but it shows kind of how to, to give back. And I just think it's such a, a learning lesson for children to see that, especially kids that are raised in abundance. It's like, oh, it's not just about the stuff. It's also about giving back. It's it's funny because every time Garrett and I are on a trip or whatever, anything, he and he always is that person. doesn't matter if it's somebody on the side of the road. He's like, here, here, here. And he's like, I'm doing this because I like the kids to see this piece of me. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's crazy. I think it's all always important to give back you know whether it's through through that or in your community or whatever it is to to really it, hel- it helps build the children so this question i ask on every podcast i've never gotten the same answer Uh-oh. one day let's call it 100 years from now maybe you have bionic arms and you've survived to 157 years old and <laughs> it's 200 years from now whatever and it's time to pass away <laughs> what percentage of the hopefully billions of dollars that you've accumulated do you leave to those kids? Mm, at that point, it's like, I feel like it's like, make sure your family's taken care of. And then if you have the abundance, why would you not give it back? You know, it's like, yeah, your, your legacy's fine. But like, why? You're, you're gone. Why hold on to that? So for me, it's like finding the right places that's going to have the most impact, that's most passionate to you. Because everybody's going to have their area that's like, I want to give here. Yeah. I want to give here. And it's like, more importantly, it's like, what is your why behind that? Is it the animals? Is it, you know, what is it? Mm-hmm. And it's where that I believe is like where your heart is genuinely called and you should, you should serve that for the, for the bigger purpose because that now is part of your legacy. So I, I'm like one of those people who are like, I like things, but I'm not like, I'm not attached to it. I'm not attached to it. I mean, I tell, I tell Garrett all the time. I'm like, I'll lose it all if I can just be with you and recreate. Like right. I'm not attached. And I think that you get to that place. I'm sure you have where mm-hmm. you're just like, so what? It's money. Who else can I help? Sure. You know, and it's finding where you're laying where you're passionate and, and just really letting your legacy live out through that way. All right. So where can people find you online on social? Any in particular companies or websites that are going on in your world right now? Yeah. So um, you can go to Danielle K. White. That's my blog. It tells a lot about me. Um, my education site is nbr.education. And that's where if you're an artist and you want to learn more about Natural Beauty Rose, you can go there. You can check out my hairline, Isla. It's Isla.com. Um, and those are my three main sites on Instagram. Just go to Danielle K. White. And then you can also go to Natural Beauty Row Hair Extensions. All right, everybody here, this is one of those podcasts that if you have someone that's an entrepreneur in the women business category, maybe they're in the hair care space or even any type of service like that, forward this type of podcast to them. As you know, I've been running this podcast ad-free for 87 weeks in a row. Uh, We've been in top five in the business category for 82 of those 87 weeks. Thanks to you guys liking, commenting, sharing, et cetera. But we self-finance it here. It's $70,000 a month to run this thing to make it, you know, fighting for our rights to be up there in the top categories and top of the charts for you guys to listen to it ad free so if you can like comment subscribe check out danielle across social media and we will see you guys next monday